Hello, 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 and welcome to the Altward Podcast, where we explore the new frontiers of work and challenge everything you thought you knew about career, business, and the world of work. I am Victoria Rillas, and with me is my co-host, Sakib Su. Hi, Sakib. Hello, Victoria. Our today's topic, Can AI Coach? Exploring the benefits and limits of AI coaching. So let's dive in. Uh, I want to kick things off by acknowledging Uh, that we do not have all the answers. We are not future tellers. We don't know what the future holds for for us. But what we do know is that AI chatbots are evolving very quickly. And every day we're surprised by the incredible things AI can do and sometimes surprised at the stupid mistakes it makes. So we're here to think and learn together as we try to navigate this exciting new realm called AI uh, and its role in coaching. A lot of you know, but some of you don't, both Sakib and I, have extensive background in coaching. Sakib has been coaching for, I think, 20 years and is a dedicated student of ontological coaching. Um, He has studied under masters like Fernando Flores, Chauncey Bell, and many others. Uh, And as for me, I have also been trained in ontological coaching um, as I have worked with Sakib for the past many years. Uh, So naturally, we are very curious about the role AI can play in coaching, whether AI can really coach, where it might be helpful and where it might be disastrous. Um, But ultimately, it is our concern and care for people's growth that is driving this conversation. All right. So um, before we dive in into the big question of whether AI can coach or not, I think we must first ask the question of what is coaching? Hmm. So Sakib, to kick kick us off today, you want to say a little bit about what exactly coaching is? Hmm. Yeah, thank you, Victoria. Great question. Um, Very briefly, coaching is a process that helps uh, individuals go beyond their current limitations and biases to unleash their potential in their engagement with life and all its domains, including work, career, family, and so on. But I think to do justice with the question, we have to begin maybe by first asking, what is not coaching? Mm. Mm. Coaching, we can see that it's not just about providing information or as some theorists or coaching uh, aficionados believe is asking, keep asking questions Mm. or offering advice like, recipes. Hmm. A good coach, what good coach is able to do, it's able to sense moods, Hmm. perturb something, and create new possibilities for personal growth in their clients. Hmm. I see. How's that for a start? Yeah. And you mentioned what coaching is not. You said it's not providing information, asking a bunch of questions, and offering advice like, you know, like rules. Uh, Can you expand on on those things, please? What coaching is not? Certainly. There are many theories of education and coaching that continue the mistakes made in the industrial era. Hmm. In the industrial era, we thought education was the process of acquiring knowledge and information. Now that knowledge has become ubiquitous, it is even more evident that education is about building new capacity for taking care what's right in front of us. In the same way, old schools and universities, they are now failing to educate young people for the time that is right in front of us. Mm -hmm. And the theories of coaching built from that era are equally misplaced. Mm -hmm. So coaching, we we can see that it's not just about providing information, as coaches are not information jukeboxes. Mm. It is also not about simply asking questions to dig the truth out of people, nor it is about offering um, recipes and advices. Mm. Another misconception to dispel coaching is not therapy. It is Mm. a distinct practice that focuses on helping individuals go beyond in their potential. Mm. You mentioned therapy. Um, How does coaching differ from therapy? I think lots of people 
kind of confuse the two or see mm -hmm. coaching as just like a therapy session. So yeah, how does it differ from therapy? And mm -hmm. then also, how does it relate to motivation? Yeah, you have really great questions here. You're diving right into one by one. Therapy, you know, um, while therapy focuses on addressing past traumas and emotional issues, and it could be very effective, coaching is about helping individuals move forward towards new futures and possibilities. Motivation can be a part of coaching, but it is not the main focus. Without the development of necessary skills and uh, kind of like a sensibilities for making commitments and action, a heightened motivational state can crash just as easily. Mm -hmm. Coaching, when done right, it goes beyond motivation by identifying the blind spots that keep people stuck and providing new interpretations that remove that stuckness. I see. So as compared to therapy, it sounds based on what you said that therapy has more to do with kind of resolving the past and coaching has more to do with like seeing the future and creating it and moving into action. Okay. So now that we have explored a little bit about what coaching is and isn't, um, I think maybe we can ask the question now of what do you think? Can AI coach? Mm, yeah, this is the, let's come to, come to the, to the point. Mm. Hmm. I am not sure, Victoria, if we are totally ready to, um, you know, dive into this question. AI has certainly made significant advancements in many fields, but when it comes to coaching, there are limitations. Mm. AI can be good at providing answers based on past data, but it may lack the capacity for invention and innovation that a human coach possesses, mm. right? A great coach is not just reporting on past collected data and analysis and everything, but constantly creating new metaphors, like new stories, the, these are like linguistic devices, like tools to help their clients go from their present state, which is some kind of a less than satisfying state to the future state. Mm. So although AI may be able to mimic some aspects of coaching like this, I think it's still a long way from uh, uh, replacing a human coach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I also want to mention that both you and I have played with a couple of chatbots and particularly coaching chatbots. Mm -hmm. um, we've tried a lot. Some of them have like one or two have surprised us and then the rest mm, are doubtful. Mm -hmm. So I would ask you, based on that, what would you say are the current capabilities and limitations mm -hmm. of AI in the context of coaching? Yeah, it's very early stage. I think this week mm -hmm. um, we have been playing with uh, um, AI coaches and uh, we got asked by um, a friend to make some assessments about a uh, startup in that space. So I think that what I, this is, uh, this is my current perception. And yeah. as the technology is dynamically shifting, so is what I can see about it. Yeah. I think that AI has become uh, proficient, very proficient at stitching together information and opinions from various sources, which can maybe give the illusion of uh, AI having an opinion. Hmm. However, it still relies on the biases in the data that it has been fed, right? Have you noticed how liberal and left-leaning chat GPT is today? Hmm. And uh, so AI has yet to develop the ability to tune into the mood of the coachee through verbal and nonverbal communication. Mm. AI also lacks the capacity for genuine care, mm, something we can call insight, like intuition, that human coach may possess. A good one. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I know from my experience that part of a coach's job is to hold people accountable for their commitments and their actions. Uh, or as 
Chauncey Bell calls it doing the job of a German grandmother holding a ruler in hand and chasing you down for, you know, your <laughs> unfinished tasks. So I, I'm curious, do you think AI can like really hold people accountable? And can it really listen to what is being said and to what is not being said? I love your metaphor mm -hmm. of uh, AI coach being a German uh, uh, mm -hmm. German grandmother that's following you with the rule. Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Yeah. But, you know, it's a very interesting question. To dive into this question, we have to first see what is accountability? What do we mean when we say accountability? Mm. Is your alarm clock holding you accountable? Mm? Mm. I don't know. You know, now I understand it is not fair to compare AI to alarm clock, but mm. there is something going on about the phenomena of repetition and your care for belonging and traditions. And when you make a promise to human beings versus when you're making a promise to the machine, even when machine pretends to have an opinion, it cannot really own it as its own opinion. So it mm -hmm. cannot take responsibility yeah. for its opinion. Human beings do. Yeah. It can simply uh, report on the opinion of others that it has been fed. Yeah. Machine opinion is non-judgmental. And actually that has been the selling point of yeah. some of the coaching apps that uh, you know is being sold as a good thing that is non-judgmental. But is it altogether a good thing? I know I picked up my socks when I was a teenager because I was concerned about the mm. uh, opinion my mother may have of me. Hmm? Yeah. Each yeah. one of us has experienced some phenomena like this. When we make a commitment to a human being, our repetition goes at risk. Yeah. Can that be the case with the uh, chatbots? Mm. I don't know. Mm. What happens when the chatbots take the shape of uh, well-built synthetic human-like robots? Mm. What happens then? Mm. Will we have the same phenomena of accountability and care about what the machine thinks? Right now, I think not. But uh, I don't know. And I'm curious about this myself. For now, Victoria, I can see that to truly produce transformation, some role of human being, being in conversation with a coachee is crucial. And that is not to say that coach's job is to keep reminding you. Machine yeah. can do a better job at that. But yeah. there is something else that happens in human to human relationships that is yet to take place between humans and machines. Yeah. So maybe in, in short, we can say AI cannot yet produce the same level of accountability as a human coach can, as people take commitments made to other humans more seriously than those made to machines. Yeah. And uh, also AI's listening capabilities today are limited. It can process and analyze spoken words, but it cannot pick up on subtleties and emotions and mm -hmm. hidden meanings that are context bound in the same way a human coach can. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It, it just brought up an idea that like when you are making a commitment with a real life coach, there's risk of like your reputation of looking bad. If I don't fulfill this uh, I, I'm like scared to go to the next you know coaching call or, or whatever whereas with the robot I don't know if that really exists yet we don't take it as seriously as we would with a human being so that's interesting talking about accountability mm -hmm. but so then the question still stands can AI coach or not with all of this being said mm -hmm. what do you think? I think that uh, while AI can provide some uh, support and information it cannot yet replace human coaching for the perceivable future. Okay. The unique qualities of human coaching, such as care, concern, and empathy, 
are not something AI can replicate. Mm. But that is not to say that technology that is evolving at the speed um, may not be able to do some parts of that. Mm. A good coach mm -hmm. is adept at uh, picking up nonverbal cues, sensing the mood, intuiting what is uh, not being said, listening to what is being said, what is not being said, where AI, on the other hand, is still limited in its ability to process and understand the complexity of human background, human context, and mm. human experiences. Mm. Yeah, you said a couple interesting things that AI cannot do yet. One is care, which is, you know, I think a very big question, maybe not the question to ask right now. Um, but in what areas would you say AI could be useful within coaching? Now, that is a very good question. Hmm. AI could be useful in supporting human coaches by handling maybe some repetitive tasks like scheduling, note-taking, tracking progress, providing summaries, and so on and so forth. Hmm. It could also help analyze and identify and connect patterns in clients' moods, practices, and responses. It can work like a, an, a digital assistant to the human coach, or when the human coach is not available, provide some, um, provide some early uh, relief by providing the information. It can enable the human coaches to also easily and quickly tune into the background of the coachee. So it can reduce time because that activity can take quite a bit for human coach to, um, and that's probably one of the reasons the coaching with human coach is expensive because it's expensive uh, time-wise for human coach to tune in. Maybe mm -hmm. AI can traverse the records of previous conversations and yeah. might even provide supplementary research on specific topics. Um, it yeah. can help the clients, the coaches, expand their knowledge and understanding based on what the coach said. So it can facilitate this trust building and this phenomenon of accountability uh, between human being and the coachee. Mm. Um, I think AI can also, if it's a like a coaching course, um, how we do coaching, it can also help the client navigate through curriculums oh, yeah. and identify gaps, maybe in understanding through quizzes and inform the coach about some assessments. Um, so, however, I think the core coaching process, though, should still be led by human coaches. But I believe we have um, we we can build a machine where a great human coach can be responsible for coaching much more effectively and much larger number of people. Mm -hmm. So it can really actually help facilitate coaches to do an even better job. I believe so. Of yeah. Coaching, okay. I believe so. Um, and what are some ways you can think of that we can integ integrate AI into the coaching industry? Um, mm -hmm. that doesn't replace human coaches. Mm -hmm. I think the key is to view AI as a tool that can complement and enhance human coaching rather than uh, like a replacement. Mm -hmm. AI can be used in areas where it excels, like uh, data analysis, pattern recognition, providing information. And by integrating AI into the coaching process, I think we can create a a powerful collaboration between humans and machines that uses the strength of both. Yeah. And um, I, I believe this would allow human coaches to be more effective with their coaching work, taking on larger number of clients and possibly making coaching more accessible without eliminating human coaches. Yeah. Yeah. That's, an, that's interesting. And I like that view, seeing AI as, as a tool to complement the coaching process, but not like fully replacing it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then also the point about making coaching more accessible is an important point. I think we have seen a lot in a couple of the coaching chatbots we've seen. One of their key selling points is that it's like easily accessible to everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. because of the price now, I think coaching is mostly for like executives, you know, people in higher roles. Um, so this would kind of democratize coaching mm -hmm. it's interesting this could certainly do that this could certainly do that but i think we have to be 
I have to, um, we have to be cautious mm -hmm. that in order to save the, the price cost alone, we rush to deploy um, some kind of um, cathartic tool or some kind of um, yeah. AI-based uh, uh, tool that does a good job of providing information yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to the human being. Um, and we, we believe that we don't need human being in the middle so that can be a dangerous move as people yeah. can get, get hurt when they are not in the in the phenomena of commitment and accountability with yeah. other human beings. Yeah. So, you know something you've said before, good coaching can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. Bad coaching can do also horrible things <laughs> because it's, it's a sensitive thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a sensitive. It's not like an easygoing thing. It's, it's, it's important. You're really taking people on their breakdowns and everything. So. When we were testing some of these robots and we saw how badly they were doing, uh, we were quite like a bit concerned because, for example, mm -hmm. one of the robots we were testing, um, its main theory was just asking a bunch of questions and having faith that I would know what to do. Like I, re I knew the answer. I just needed some questions so I could reflect um, and just like dig deep and I would know what to do eventually. But I think that puts a lot of faith on the person to know what they really want. Whereas a lot of times in your own coaching uh, calls, um, people don't know what they want. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know. We know that we are not satisfied, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean we know where we want to be. And most of the time we don't know because we're stuck because we just can't see. We have blind spots. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, so yeah. and we don't always know that we're not satisfied. Mm -hmm. A good coach... Yeah. Yeah. A good coach, maybe uh, some dissatisfaction that is hidden, brings the coachee to the table. And True. in conversation, a good coach sees that what might be the perceptive roadblock to uh, arriving at a new place that is an expanded place. Mm -hmm. This is the, the game of uh, looking at human potentiality and unleashing the poten potentiality as an individual or, or as a team together, yeah. um, I think that um, that the AI today, if someone really knows on how to work with AI, has worked a lot with coaching process. I've used another actually uh, bot. I think it's called Life Coach or something on um, character on, on character dot AI. It's incredibly good. It's yeah. very very good if you know how to ask the right question and if you know how to participate. Um, very well in the process, the, the the conversation is an incredible simulation. What a conversation would be with uh, some form of um, it's a bit built on uh, psychological principles, um, but it's really really effective. I mean, it does a really good job of uh, looking at your question and providing with some clues, and it has all these questions built up. Mm -hmm. So, but you don't have the the phenomena that my reputation is at risk, yeah. right? Going back to the non-judgmental thing, the non-judgmental, is that a good thing? Or that's what human beings are. Yeah. How, what we think of each other matters a great deal. How do we treat mm -hmm. each other? Yeah. And what do we do in our lives? And what do we do to, um, to fulfill uh, each other's uh, satisfaction of who we are? Yeah. And we want, we care about uh, how we are perceived by other human beings and so on and so forth. That is the the nature of human being. This and that's is not a bad. Of, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> that's not a bad thing. So, no, that's what brings us together. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> that's what sometimes pushes us to do things that otherwise mm -hmm. we would be too lazy to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a, that's a good question. Also, briefly, you mentioned that you know sometimes we ourselves don't know that we're dissatisfied, and that's another interesting point because sometimes people come to us, and they have like this hidden bad mood that is so obvious to like everyone else, but not obvious to them. And it is a coach's job to like, you know, grab that bad mood and show them that, you know, you are being like this and like this and like this. And I think as of now, a coach is not, even this uh, life coach from character.ai is not really able to, to do that, to like grab your bad mood um, and show you a different possibility. That's right. Yeah. But well who knows? Maybe, maybe in the near future, it might be able to do that. Let's see. So, yeah, let's see. So talking about the future, 
Mm. What would you say the future of coaching will look like with AI and other uh, other techno technological advancements? I think that uh, the future in this particular uh, domain is uh, is going to be owned by those that are paying attention to what's changing. Mm. And I think some kind of a hybrid model in which a human coach mm. can, uh, technology can facilitate uh, the, the relationship between human coach and human coachee. You know, there aren't a lot of very many really, really good coaches, right? Mm. Uh, people, you go do a 30-hour course and print a certificate and suddenly you're a coach. We're not talking about that. We're talking about really, really good coaches. And mm. there aren't that many, actually. So I think that coaches that are really good, AI can help scale the work. Mm. And AI can uh, uh, can help facilitate um, and do a lot of the lot of the jobs uh, that take coach an extra time to do, like uh, setting up yeah. reminders or uh, remembering what happened in the last coaching call or reviewing notes. So I see the future is kind of this this opportunity maybe there, which is um, secretly or not so secretly we are pursuing. Uh, this opportunity to have a platform that incorporates AI elements like a digital assistant uh, that could be available to the coachee. And at the same time, some ad hoc coaching could be available within a single push of a button. So, and the coach can have uh, maybe access to the uh, conversations if the coachee wants or, some, you know, who knows, I'm trying to solutionize the feature set right in this conversation. Um, but I think some kind of a hybrid platform, I believe, uh, built more on the principle of human being in the middle and mm. technology around it to facilitate, yeah. to coordinate. Uh, I, I see that that would be the way to go. And I, I think that's that. the opportunity I want to more seriously pursue uh, as we are pursuing internally here. Mm. I see that. Um, okay, last question. Throughout all of this, what would, um, what mood do you suggest, or what mood do you caution against in mm -hmm. exploring AI and coaching and the role of coaching in it? Um, well, you know, uh, let me hear from you, being mm -hmm. a younger generation. I, let me turn that question around and ask you that: What mood, all this emergence of AI coaching, it creates for you? And what mood are you seeing that we need to take on? Mm. So let me hear your thoughts a little bit on the same, same yeah. question. Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, so I think based on my own experience, it's funny when this, when the chat GPT first came out, I kind of ignored it, to be honest. I was like, yeah, it's, it's nothing. Um, and then you told me, Vicky, <laughs> if you're not a little bit scared, you're not taking it seriously, right? And then together we kind of dove deep and really took a look at it mm. um and in the beginning it was kind it was perturbing mm. uh especially when we kind of found uh this life coach from character.ai and saw mm. that it can like it can actually it, it seems like hold a deep, conversation yeah it can like coach mm -hmm. um it was a bit perturbing but um i think it also triggered a mood of like okay it can do that but what can like it's what can we do you know mm -hmm. it's not going to replace us there's so much there's mm -hmm. so much that have we, that we have said now and that we have not said that uh goes into coaching and the relationship between a coach and a coachee um so in that sense more developing the mood of maybe a new beginner of like okay this is a new thing um and it's very exciting um, and let's, let's learn together and let's, you know, grow together and innovate as we see fit. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah. I think you're, you've hit the nail. Um, you've hit the head right on the nail is that the, uh, this AI emergence, it could spell a bit of a mood of fear and anxiety in many professions, including yeah. in the profession of coaching. And I think it's rightly so. Any coach that is not paying attention to what's happening 
in the in the AI world and it's just have their eyes closed like no 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 I just human being the machine will never be able to do what human being does is not to pay careful attention to what's going on we I think last uh, time we talked about uh, refusing to use the the yeah. chatbots it's like in 2001 refusing to use Google and saying no 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 I will only do my research by visiting my local library, sitting mm-hmm. down, checking out the books, cross-referencing. Mm-hmm. No, it is an incredibly helpful tool. So I think the moods of, uh, even though it may create a mood of um, some resentment that my job is in trouble and a lot of jobs might be in trouble and mm-hmm. the mood of uh, fear or mood that wants to just, you know, um, ignore it, like bury your head in the sand kind of a mood, whatever yeah. you call that, is the mood of avoidance. I yeah. think to to confront those moods, not to ignore them, to say, yes, this is how it is, but the moods that would be helpful in navigating this wave, mm. right? The, the wave we got in the, the back uh, background here, the great wave of change. You cannot make these waves. No one human being is making these waves. These mm. waves are like emergences. So um, paying attention to the wave, you need a mood of, um, you call excitement. I, I, I would caution too much against too much excitement as well, right? Mm-hmm. Excitement can turn out to be possibly a naive mood that can trap mm-hmm. you that we're just excited and AI will fix the problems. It's more of a mood of uh, a measured enthusiasm, a kind of uh, a a joy for being alive at this time of change. Yeah. This joy at investigating a major shift in human history. And we are alive right at this moment to to contend with this shift. This kind of a mood can maybe then take you to learn how to work with this new era of tools and machines that are emerging more effectively Mm -hmm. instead of, falling to uh, ludism and becoming a ludite uh, going that I'm going to destroy all AI, AI chatbots. And what's a ludite? Uh, people that uh, hate technology and they make it oh. the mission of their life to, okay. to destroy technology. <laughs> it started in England in mid, I think, um, 18th century or mm. some movement like that, which was to, to destroy technology uh, at any cost, technology is perceived to be bad. Mm-hmm. What we fail to see, we human beings, we are beings of technology. We are made up of technology. Look at this. This is technology. This is technology. Look at uh, even my, uh, if you look at my shape is made with technology. If I didn't have some clippers or something, this right here shirt, that is technology. Mm-hmm. The primary technology I'm using is the technology of language and human being is a linguistic machine. Turns out these chatbots are also some new kind of linguistic machines. Mm -hmm. So I think it remains to be seen what happens to human beings as we begin to live life in these very sophisticated linguistic machines that almost mimic our own uh, own, uh, brains or our own Mm -hmm. capacity. And they could be incredible. I'm sure when calculator first came out, or scientific calculator when first came out, it was incredible what you can do with it. The same way, I think that is quite incredible what we can do with this AI technology. So the moods of um, mm, not optimism, but mm-hmm. moods of some joy for being a fighter in the fight, mood of some yeah. kind of enthusiasm to contend and investigate what's rising. That's, mm. that's what I recommend to be the, the moods for this. Mm, I think we invented a mood called the Marco Polo mood. Do you remember that mood? Mm, Say more. It sounds familiar. I don't, but just like going on, ago. like, you know, becoming a new beginner, going on new adventures and learning and being uh, fascinated by that. Mm-hmm. Ah, to go on a search, the mood of a Marco Polo. Yeah. You're finding new lands and there mm-hmm. might be, um, you know, new territories and new laws and new opportunity and mm-hmm. new people. So the mood of a Marco Polo is a good one yeah it's mm-hmm. a good memory and good recall and you briefly said something about the calculator and it's funny because i think when the calculator came out people probably thought oh how are we gonna how are people gonna learn math now 
it's all in the calculator. <laughs> but uh, they underestimated right. how uh, how dumb we can be sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But um, you know, calculator <laughs> did make us maybe a little bit less reliant <laughs> on being able to do math manually. But what we have been able to accomplish. Yeah, uh, it put the focus on something else. So it put yeah. the focus on something else. Very yeah, good. Yeah. More yeah. higher skills, meta skills, skills about acquiring skills, they begin to become more important. Yeah. And which is what we have been saying in the whole uh, artwork. Movement. Yes, true. So, yeah. You know, I want to end this conversation with the thought that all of this kind of brought back uh, a metaphor from the Matrix. Of like, mm. you know, do you want to take the blue pill or the red pill? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, do you want to like join this new wave uh, or continue to kind of be, put, mm -hmm. like stick your head in the sand and just kind of ignore everything? And So I don't know how this metaphor yeah, applies. You. So you're saying it's a blue pill and a dark blue pill because <laughs> it's machines. Oh. So it's, you know, it's the usage of the machine. So I'm not sure, uh, but I'll have to think about that one a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I think we should. I think that's a good place to end. That's a good place to end. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, very good. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, so with this, we conclude episode three of the Altward podcast. Can AI coach exploring the benefits and limits of AI coaching? Thank you, Sake, for sharing your expertise and insights. Good I really plan. enjoyed this conversation. Um, and if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to join our Altward community in our upcoming private live event next Friday on April twenty first. Uh, we'll put the link in the comment section. Um, and don't forget to tune in next time in the same place as we explore further many more interesting topics. I am mm -hmm. Victoria Rellas, and this has been the All Work Podcast. Thank you very much.